Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. So in today's video, we're going to go over the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. Uh, this is a company that I did some research in and that I personally invested in uh, in January of 2021. Uh, you know, at this time when I did my research, this company looks really promising. Uh, and so I, I think it's definitely a company to wor worth looking into. Now, before we start, let me just you know, let me just make clear that I am not a technology or semiconductor uh, expert. I don't work in that space. Uh, but based on this research that I found and, and the numbers I'm looking at, this company definitely looks like a, 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 a solid company to look into. So let's get straight to it. So a quick, a quick summary of what the company does. Uh, it says here, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company manufactures and sells integrated circuits and semiconductors. Uh, it offers customer service, account management, engineering ser services. Uh, the company services serves customers in computer uh, communications, uh, consumer, industrial, and standard segments in North America, Europe, Japan, China, and South uh, Korea. Uh, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company was founded in 1987 and is headquartered in Taiwan. So, I mean, this is definitely a, a global distributor and it looks like they're selling to uh, several continents, including North America, Europe, Japan, and China, and South Korea. Uh, so that definitely uh, is attractive to me because I know that they're doing business all around the globe. Um, okay, so a couple things we, uh, we want to start looking at, you know... Uh, Obviously, there's been a lot of hype with this company with its its recent earnings and profitability. Um, as you can see on this bar chart here, it looks like they've uh, pretty much have kept up with their earnings expectations the past couple quarters in 2019. Uh, but in 2020 is when you know the coronavirus happened. Uh, this company has really taken off, um, especially in the third quarter of 2020. And they recently. Uh, reported uh, Q4 earnings, which doesn't look like it's it's recorded here. But uh, I, from what the earnings call, it sounds like they did really well in the fourth quarter of 2020. Um, so that's just kind of the, the latest in, in terms of you know all the hype that this company's getting. Um, so let's look at some statistics. Uh, you know, let's go ahead and look at a, do a quick key statistic review. Uh, so the company is selling at a, a trailing 12 month price earnings ratio of 37 compared to the industry so it's it's selling just about uh, what other companies are trading at in the semiconductor space um, now I'm really impressed by the the price to earnings growth ratio five-year projected um, they're at 1.5 compared to the industry of, of 3.14 so this is really good because it tells me that the company is growing at just about the same rate uh, in, in terms of how it's priced and the future expected growth. Uh, so typically with stocks that have a higher P ratio, you know, you normally want a, a peg ratio that is closest to one. And this just looks like a, a pretty good peg ratio, especially when you compare it to the industry average. Um, a couple other things we want to look at here. I don't really look at price to cash flow and price to sell because again, that's just kind of like currently what it's priced at. Um, this is definitely, you know, I definitely look at this company as a growth company. So I'm, what I'm really looking for is, uh, a, a really uh, outstanding, strong revenue growth, and and also uh, improving margins is what I'm looking for in growth stocks. And and then we can see that here is you see that the revenue growth in the last five years is eight uh, percent compared to the industry average of, of nine. Uh, so it's just about industry average. Um, but what I really like is this forward earnings per share long term growth rate. Is they're expected to grow uh, at a at a faster rate compared to the semiconductor industry uh, so again those are positive uh, positive notes there uh, in terms of available free cash flow uh, you know I think they're generating a, a good amount of positive cash flow uh, in the business compared to the industry average so we don't have to worry about uh, any cash you know shortage of cash issues uh, so definitely they have enough to, to keep running uh, now this is where this company really sets them, themselves apart for, uh, uh, against their competitors is their, their margins, their profit margins. So their pre-tax margins is 42% compared to the industry average of 24%. Uh, the operating the operating uh, margins, 41% compared to the industry of 25%. And then their beta margins, 60, 64% compared to the industry average of 38%. So again, this is where this company really sets themselves apart is that they just have really uh, strong profit margins. And again, the, the two... Uh, key things we're looking for is again strong revenue growth and and strong margins for growth companies. 
Now, if we were to see a company like if we were to see that this company was uh, generating uh, declining revenues, then that would definitely be a concern, and, and it wouldn't be a company that I'd be looking to see because uh, most likely, if, if a company is generating uh, s lower sales every year, it's most likely to continue. But in this case, this company is constantly generating higher sales every year. Um, okay, so in terms of returns, I mean, great returns here. You know, 30% ROE, 20% uh, return on assets, and 26% uh, return on investment. Uh, so pretty good. Okay, now in terms of the balance sheet, uh, I'm really comfortable with their balance sheet. You know, they have a, a, a really low amount of debt, and they have plenty enough cash to keep operating. Uh, so from a financial uh, standpoint here, you know, this company is, is really healthy, uh, has a healthy balance sheet, and it's and it's delivering outstanding performance in terms of uh, profitability and, and 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 you know given the size of this company you know it's keeping up with the market in terms of revenue growth uh, so so all positive notes here um, okay so let's go back uh, so the next thing that I kind of wanted to look at before I, I invested in this company is I, I I wanted to get some more qualitative information just to get a better understanding of, of what's happening uh, with the business and I found some really interesting articles. Uh, a couple of them was, this was the first article I found. So um, Intel plans to tap uh, Taiwan Semiconductor to produce uh, new chips. And what I really like about this article is that uh, th this, th this, th there's a section in this article where, I may be looking at the wrong article, but uh, there was a, 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 an article that basically says, oh, here we go. So Intel will likely turn to Taiwan Semiconductor for chips. So let's try this one here. Maybe it's a different article. There we go. Uh, so, so basically, there's a section in this article that that shows. Um, here we go. So for semi for Taiwan Semiconductor, shifting some of its production would generate a lot more revenue. Um, so they're talking about Intel here. So Intel. Shifting some of its production would generate a lot more revenue. Uh, Danley wrote that for every two billion in processor business that Intel shifts to Taiwan Semiconductor, the latter company will gain uh, 560 million in sales. Uh, Danley wrote that it's likely that Intel will outsource the lower end Atom processors. Currently, Danley estimates uh, Atom chips are roughly 15% of company revenues, or nine billion, by which his calculation. Taiwan Semi could see as much as $2.5 billion in additional revenue. So that is the home run uh, hitter line right there because this uh, deal that they're working out with Intel uh, could potentially generate $2.5 billion in revenue. So again, we're looking for that strong, constant revenue growth. And, and uh, this is a, a great uh, article that, that shows you know that doing more business with Intel is, is, is good for Taiwan Semiconductor. Um, another company, another article I found was this um, TSM uh, Taiwan Semiconductor uh, Q1 revenue forecast. Apple supplier sees surging global chip demand. Um, so it's it sounds like you know there's there's a lot of demand for this product, and given that Apple is is you know one of the big players in, in the the tech and the iPhone and the computer space, uh, uh, you know obviously there's there's Good, good demand here for for uh, the product that TSM is able to, to deliver and manufacture. Um, now there was one concern. So before we get to the concern, uh, let's this last article here. Um, TSM's massive capital spending plans for 2021 uh, could put pressure on its earnings. Now I'm not concerned that you know if the company decides to reinvest and develop you know reinvest into their company, I, I'm not concerned that that would that about the earnings and, and the pressure that it may cost to its earnings because um, what I'm looking for in a growth company is I'm looking for a company that is going to continuously uh, reinvest to either improve profitability or, or to improve efficiency uh, because the more they reinvest in their company the more they're going to be able to improve on their on their pro on their financials and so some key highlights here is Taiwan Semiconductor uh, is expected to spend 25 billion to 28 billion in the, in 2021 to make advanced chips. So I see that they're he they're heavily investing in making their their product better, uh, which is really attractive for a growth company. Um, now it may take it may take some time for them to develop their product to get it to the point where uh, they want it. Um, so 
this is what kind of why I said, you know, this is definitely a long term hold. I don't think this is a, a stock you want to hold for the short term. This is this may be a stock you want to hold for the next five, seven, ten years, maybe maybe more, depending on where, where they're at in the next decade. Um, so really positive uh, uh, note here on Taiwan. Now, the only concern I have is this issue that's going on with China. So, uh, you know, China, it, it, I think it's safe to say that their ultimate goal is that they want to be able to, to, to nationalize Taiwan and, and including nationalize uh, TSM. Um, and and that's, that, that can be a cause for concern because uh, in this article, uh, it basically they basically talk about how um, you know if, if they were to 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 nationalize uh, Taiwan Semiconductor Company, there's a possibility that, that they would uh, restrict uh, Taiwan TSM to to have any business with uh, the United States, and, and that could be uh, that could have a huge negative impact on the company's uh, earnings. So. You know that 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 is that is a risk, uh, and and also the the management and the executives at TSM uh, actually consider this as a possibility. Now I don't know the probability of this actually happening, but it, it's definitely something in, that they're taking into account, and they've actually included it in their forecast as one of their scenarios that you know that there is a possibility that that China would take over Taiwan or and it would gain control over TSM, and so that they've. They've modeled that into their forecast. So, uh, again, it, 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 there's, a, there's a probability. Um, I don't know what that probability is. Um, now, I did take into account that the United States is about to have Joe Biden as president. So, um, you know, I, just my overall sentiment, I mean, I'm, I'm just going based off feeling here, is that the, the Joe Biden administration uh, wants to improve China's relationships, uh, especially after four years of uh, you know, back and forth tr trade tension with Donald Trump and China. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers because I'm a U.S. Uh, citizen that, that you know, the, the relationship between China and U.S. improves with Joe Biden as president, um, simply from an economic standpoint, uh, because, I mean, I would hope that Taiwan Semiconductor Company stays uh, as is and does not get, um, you know, taken over by China. But, you know, that's something that I, I am worried about. And it is a risk. So anyways, um, one last note I want to make uh, on this article is, is that the, uh, there's a company in China called, uh, I forgot what the company is called, but it's called S-M-I-C-Y. Uh, that's, the, that's the name of the ticker symbol for the stock. And uh, what they've been doing is that they've been actually stealing uh, uh, Taiwan Semiconductor engineers and uh to, to go work for their company to develop their semiconductor business. Um, now, from what I read in this article is, is uh, that that company is still way behind TSM. But, I mean, just given the rapid growth of the Chinese economy, uh, you know, I, I don't see how China can attract, uh, you know, develop their technology uh, business uh, to, to be able to, to, to meet and be a, a strong competitor for uh, Taiwan Semiconductor. Um, so again, a lot of political uh, uh, risk here, um, uh, but again, there's a you know, given all the financials and the current state of the company, uh, I think it's definitely a company that's going to be around, and just the, the strong demand in the semiconductor space and how we're emerging to more technology and more automation. I, I think this is a company that's here to stay. Um, you know, the overall senses is that you know there's there's. There's there's positive midterm and, and long term sentiment for this company, uh, and it's uh, it's I, I I personally would say it's uh, undervalued compared to the industry average, and you know um, the only reason I made that assumption is is by doing a, a, a quick uh, multiple check uh, between them and and their competitors, and some of the competitors is like uh, Qualcomm. Um, so after doing the, the enterprise value divided by the bidder, um, I found that Taiwan Semiconductor is actually trading at a lower multiple than Qualcomm and is actually generating, uh, I believe was generating uh, stronger sales growth. So that's, again, a lot of positive things to like about this company. So if you can get comfortable with the political risk, I think this is definitely a, a strong pick. Now, again... Uh, make sure to, if you're if you decide to invest in this company, make sure to do your own research. And if you find something that I didn't mention in this video, uh, uh, please share. Uh, this is definitely 
uh, a com uh, company that I want to you know continue to learn more about. So, anyways, I hope this video was helpful. Uh, you know, if you have any questions, comments, uh, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And uh, I appreciate if you subscribe and like my YouTube channel. And I look forward to speaking to you in the next video. Thank you.